Good morning. Do you see what I see? I never had to put the rain fly on. I didn't even have to wear any socks. I actually knocked myself out with an Ativan, a muscle relaxer, and ibuprofen. <laughs> Oh, I want to make sure my muscles got all relaxed, no inflammation. I'm already hot, it's 8 a.m. I have no idea what to expect for the big climb today. At least I had a big meal last night and I slept through the night. I'm sitting here going, are you making these facial noise movements? Because I feel like the left side of my face is a little swollen. Can you see by my eye and underneath my eye how puffy it is? I mean, they're puffy because I just woke up, but See the left side, my eyelid? I wonder if something bit me in the night. But I was in my tent, I'm pretty anal about making sure there's nothing in it before I, you know, zip. getting water and these people are all getting ready to go out on an awesome whitewater adventure. I have only gone three miles, no, yeah, I've only gone three miles and 730 feet and I'm sweating like I've never have on this trip. This is gonna be hard. I'm climbing up to 8,000 feet and I'm tired. The guy said that you're gonna run out of water for 25 miles, the guy who wrote the article and I believe this is the stretch from the Snake River up to the top of whatever the name of the summit is that I'm going to. This is gonna wipe me out from the heat. I can't call on a miracle for the climb I'm approaching, but I can call on Cliff. I need you to push my ass up this next massive climb because I'm barely making it on 8% walking with my bike. One packet equals half a bar of blocks. So I'm gonna have the blocks. We've gone almost five miles. We've climbed 1,751 feet. And for perspective, yep, that's us. See all the switchbacks, ziggy, 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 ziggy. According to where I'm standing and looking across, I'd say we're about halfway. See how gnarly it is? And then your bike slides and your feet slide, like I just did. I have 40 PSI in my front tire and 50 in the back. These cliff blocks totally work. I can like feel this in my system because I'm not hyperventilating. I knew this before this trip. I used to use them road biking, but not until I was like really exhausted. A lot of people just gel, gel, gel. I kind of like to see what my body can do without it and kind of train my body to push itself without assistance. And I'm probably shouting right now because I usually lose my hearing when I've exerted myself. It also could just be sweat that's running down into my earlobes, into my ears and down my earlobes. The cliff blocks, I can put one in each cheek and I'll just let them slowly dissolve. So it's sort of giving that to me like slowly. If I'm doing some type of a race or I'm racing against myself, my time, my PR, whatever on Strava, I like the gel this the one squeeze because like boom off you go but no matter how much boom I give myself right now there is no off I go except like a little turtle a lot of these that you get to come down you're like oh yeah I finally get to come down but it's really dangerous you hit some of these they look little but that'll send you into the air and when you have a heavy bike heavy packs plus your body bang and down slam it down on the ground then skid out the road down from Morgan Pass didn't have much of that gouges in the road. Most people are probably going to be taking this south. You're going to be coming down this thing and it is very sandy. I started way down there. Only seven miles in. Seven miles. 2,700 feet. I'm going to rewrite the wild west route. He said this is a monster climb and they do tell you how much climbing you're going to do for the whole segment, but I think it needs to be broken down when it's super gnarly like this one. This is the gray. This is how many miles long it is, whether you're going north or south. And this is the terrain because you know the word monster like well what does that mean totally can't hear myself the forest development ranger or whatever he was i had to make him stop he wasn't gonna stop and when i brought up water source i was waiting for him to say well here here's a bottle or something he didn't offer me anything and he's like wow so he said once i get up there i pretty much have three miles it's giving me permission to drink more of my water truck passed me earlier and they're like wow that must be hard what's interesting is almost everybody that passed me on my way to chalice from Stanley, asked if I was okay, if I needed water or anything. Not one person here has. I'm walking, huffing and puffing. People are like, hi. Not that it's their responsibility. It's just, you know they have their coolers and I just I just couldn't imagine not stopping and offering somebody on a bicycle some water. My arm hurts so much right now. I'm so tired I can't even hold the cell phone up. I can't even speak apparently. Here's where we hiked our bike. The rest of it is around the other side of the mountain. This is the hardest hike I've ever done. 
not carrying a backpack and just pushing a bicycle. It wasn't so sandy and slippery and gravelly. It would be a little bit easier to push, but it's a fucking grind. I'm not at the top yet, but I'm really close. That first guy go, when is there gonna be water? And he's like, well, now he was coming from this direction. There might be a little still water, but you know, I don't know how good the water is. I said, yeah, but I have one of those water purifiers and I'm thinking any water will do. Do you happen to hear that sound? Sometimes I just wonder, between the woman who told me about the summit before, uh, I can't remember. Anyway, look. A beautiful, strong moving creek. That really lets me relax. That was my big concern. I can finish the water I have. I could jug a bunch of water. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, I am physically, I am, I am beyond exhausted. We went nine miles, 3,700 feet. That's just ridiculous. It took me three and a half hours. Fuck, I need to get off this summit though, wherever it is, it's coming up. You can feel the cool air because if I think I'm at 8,000 feet and I want to start going down because I freeze my ass sleeping up here. Bike packers! Hey. How are you? Hi, where are you guys coming from? Horse Creek Pass. So I'm yeah. doing this thing called the Frank Church Loop from Stanley. Stanley Frank Church Stanley. Loop, okay. Uh-huh, clockwise around. And what are you doing? I'm just following him. <laughs> <laughs> you joined I me. Days ago? Those two guys said, I have about a thousand, four, a thousand or twelve hundred feet more of climbing. A freaking, it said development on his truck. He's like, it'll level out here around the bend in three miles and then you'll start to go down. I don't. It goes to like 8,300 feet. I'm at like 73, I guess. I'm just concerned about sleeping up here because I might freeze my ass off. I'm already cold right now. My fingers have the rain odds in them already from touching that cold water, but I don't know if I'll make it up over. I'm not ready to stop. It's like 430. Continental Divide Trail. Can't be the elevation 6106 because I know I'm at like 72 when those guys checked down below there. So maybe that means something else. I'm so tired from pushing my bike for so long. I feel like I maybe should take a break. The thing is, it's like takes time to set your tent up. I feel like I need to go for another hour and then I'll just cuddle in and take a, like a full out of it. I never do, I only take a quarter. Maybe I could bike this. Well, this is steep. I mean, look at these grades. You know, these grades are around 14%. So I just, so I'm so tired, I can't bike even the grades that are like 8%. I, I start and then I'm like, uh, and I get off pushing my bike. This has been a, the hardest day ever. You guys see that? That's steep for me, carrying all this weight. On a road bike, I'd be fine. See how it gets really gnarly on each side? There's nowhere really to camp. I just said that about going another hour. And then I saw this night, nice spot. I have a feeling it's gonna be windy, so I tied down the tarp really tight. It's only 5 p.m. I have two liters of water that I got earlier, and then I have this. I was literally using this to wash myself, like my crotch and my armpits. The moment I'm sitting there like naked, somebody starts coming down the road. Oh my God, I can't hold the phone up. I think I'm just airing out my shorts because there's no stream. The heat will magic magically disinfect them. Should do something, shouldn't it? The other really great thing, there is no bear scat anywhere. I walked around, I walked down to the woods a little bit, around there. In fact, there's no animal shit at all. I'd love to see a bear way over there. My chain is skipping. Like when I try to put it in the easy gear, I feel like it wants to skip to the next one down. Wouldn't stay here, it would jump. Oh, there is a chunk of dirt in there. My neck tech 21 watt solar charger. It's charging great. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I'm feeling really lightheaded and I had the fluid and I was taking a gel, the gummies, the peanut butter packets. It was so hot and so much exertion, especially in a physical position that I'm rarely in. 10 and a half miles, 4,300 feet. That's crazy. Hence why I hike a bike to pretty much all of it except three miles. So I'm anxious to make dinner. I'm kind of out of it, so this piece might not run real fluid. <laughs> We're dining on perky jerky, wagyu beef jerky, and Idaho Spuds Supreme Baked Mashed Potatoes <laughs> since 1933. These are actually really popular for hiking and stuff because it's kind it's not too heavy. It's two cups of water. I'm gonna use this packet even though it's not designed to put the water in here. I'm gonna see what happens because I don't want to get my pot dirty since I have nowhere to rinse it off. To light our little fire, I was using Esbit, those little pellets. But since I'm out of the Esbit, I'm using this. Everyone calm down. I'm do, I put that there so it doesn't blow away. I'm taking it with me. Quick fire. Lights any fire fast. We'll have to see if that's true. I need to keep the flame going long enough to get the water hot. I want it in the direction of the wind is not blowing. So I don't want the handles of my pot to burn. I don't want you to tip over because you're awfully tilted. 
there's my half ass setup. I ended up pouring them in the pot because it was too complicated to hold the plastic bag. I'm just too tired. This is the whole bag, instant mashed potatoes. And the water wasn't even close to boring. It was just really warm. See, it was good enough. I will leave my campsite because even though there's no bear scat or whatever, I just would prefer to, you know, play it safe. What a gorgeous place to dine. As long as I don't run into an animal out here. There's a nice log to sit on. Ooh, a stoop. Oh, yes. Thought I just heard a tree fall. Or there's dinosaurs. And by the way, the minute I hear a branch crack, I'm out of here. I'm going back to my tent. I am sleeping with my bear spray tonight. And yes, I did go over on how to use it. You look at it, you're like, oh, this is easy. I'll remember. No, not necessarily. Food. The bear could easily just grab this bag because they can get to him from their hind legs and just carry it off. So we're just trying to focus on the ground animals. Even a mountain lion could go on his hind legs and reach that. When these branches are really weak, these are all dead. So there's where I'm sleeping. I hung it here. It's far enough away. I just took a branch and put that over. So the stuff is inside odor-proof bag that I paid like $11 for, a stupid little Ziploc odor-proof bag. We'll see if those work. The black bag is a waterproof bag, so that should eliminate scent to a degree. I hope you don't see me tonight, because if you see me, it's because something is happening with animals outside my tent. I'm getting ready for tonight, so I'm not freezing my butt off. These are just yummy sleeper socks, smart wool, thicker socks. The Pearl Izumi cycling leggings, see how they only go from here to here, but they're fuzzy. They're meant for the winter. Women's winter fuzzy le leggings, like you get them at TJ Maxx. I think I got this for $12. It has some down in it, it's really light. Wool sweater, and underneath this, stretchy. I have rain odds, so my fingers get cold super fast. Wilderness technology from recreation outlet yeah these rock gosh my hands look so old it's so dry electronics and my bear thing and i always use these little meshies for like toilet paper my roca shades i absolutely adore don't want anything happening to them my headlamp chapstick i sleep with my electronics I keep them inside the sleeping bag near my feet it makes a big difference because the cold can eat up your batteries really fast i would leave your phone your portable battery charger, your headlamp, your water purifier, whatever is really of value to you. I do recommend getting a portable because solar panels require the sun. What happens if you have a few rainy days? So this is pocket juice. It holds 8,000 mAh and it'll say that capacity. 8,000 mAh. Output is 3.4 A. If you just use one, that's really good. I'm gonna just use examples because I don't know what they are right off the top of my head. This holds 8,000, so you've got a totally charged up of power, 8,000. This only holds 1,000 mAh of power. That would mean that this could run to empty and you will be able to charge it eight times with this because this holds 8,000 and this only requires 1,000 for one full charge. These actually last. Steri pens. So some of these items, you check to see how long they actually last once you charge them. If you're trying to figure out your whole battery thing. My phone, I think, is like 6,000. This whole thing will charge my phone only like maybe one and a half times. A lot of people don't know that. They just go, oh, look, it's a battery. It's cheap. It's lightweight. Oh, yeah. So you might get one bigger than you need and heavier than you need. If you're going to be in the middle of nowhere for a month and you'll have no access to electricity, you know, you might want something that has 24,000 mAh. Just when you thought it was over, just when I thought it was over. The other important thing, and I believe I mentioned this when I go over solar panels, output's really important. Think of it as the higher the number, the faster it's gonna send the power to your device. Once you use both ports, you're splitting the power, kind of. That's it. Mm -hmm.